So all of the situations we've looked at so far is where y could be explicitly defined in terms of x, meaning all of our scenarios we have had y equals some function with an input of x. What's going to change in this section is that we won't be able to define y in this way, in that in order to express our function or our equation, we'll have a mixture of x and y on maybe both sides of the equation, but we won't be able to solve for y and just have a single expression that expresses y as a function of x. So that might make a little more sense as we look at the functions like down below where we see we're going to look at this x squared plus y squared equals 25 which is the graph of a circle with a radius of 5. Now, we could go about the process of solving for y, but when we do this, we would end up with y equals plus or minus root 25 minus x squared. And what's happening here is that this is actually ending up as two separate functions. What this is doing is it would separate so that we have the equation for the top half of the circle, and then a separate function for the bottom half of the circle. And what we want is an expression that just graphs the entire circle in one go instead of two separate functions. So with that, we don't want to use this form that has the plus or minus. Instead, it's better to represent the x squared plus y squared equals 25 as a single relationship of x and y that produces that entire circle right there. So with these functions, we're going to need to use implicit differentiation, which is going to be the process of solving for dy dx. And to do that, what we'll do is differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x. So what that'll look like is taking d dx of both sides of the equation. So that's our differentiation with respect to x. And then we're going to use some chain rule when we when it gets to y. And I'll describe that as we go through this example here. And in the chain rule, we're going to see a dy dx pop up, and that's what we want to solve for. And then just in terms of some notation, if we decide to plug in a point so that we calculate the slope of the tangent line, that's where we're looking at dy dx at a coordinate a, b. So that's this notation here, just this tall line is telling us where we're defining that derivative. Okay, so let's consider the implicit equation x squared plus y squared equals 25. Does the slope of the tangent line at the point x, y depend solely on the value of x? So let's say we chose x equals 2. So let's say we go to x equals positive 2. And what's happening with this equation is we end up with two possibilities. We have this positive y value and this negative y value. So for that value of x, we end up with two coordinates. Now, if I graph the tangent lines at each of those spots, here we'd see a negative slope. And here we would see a positive slope. So what's happening is there's two separate equations of a tangent line. So this question that's being asked is if this relies solely on x? No, because if I told you x equals 2, solve for the tangent line or solve for the slope of the tangent line, the next question would be, well, which one? Are we using the positive y value or the negative y value? So our answer to this is going to be no. And it also depends on y. We would need to know the y coordinate to know which slope we have. Also depends on y. So um, the punchline here is, well, not punchline, but one x value could have two corresponding y values. each with different slopes of the tangent line. Different slopes of the tangent line. 
So it's this situation that we bring in implicit differentiation. Okay, so using the process outlined below, so those two steps, though it gets a little more complicated than just those two steps, we're going to find dy dx. So where we're going to start is with our implicit equation. So x squared plus y squared equals 25. And what we're going to do is take the derivative with respect to x of both sides. So d dx of the left-hand side and d dx of the right-hand side. So when we do this, we're taking the derivative with respect to x of x squared. We're adding that with the derivative with respect to x of y squared. And that equals the derivative with respect to x of just the constant 25. So the two pieces that we've been doing already is this derivative with respect to x of x squared. That right there is just 2x. So the key is that our variables are lining up. We're taking a derivative with respect to x of x squared. So we just apply our rules like we have been doing. Same thing with the right-hand side of the equation. This, we're just taking the derivative of a constant, which always comes out to a zero. Now, our new piece is this derivative with respect to x of y squared. And this is where chain rule is going to come in. Now, we won't think of it as chain rule every single time, though that's what it is. Once we do lots of these, you'll get into a good habit with them. But for this initial explanation, let's talk about this in terms of chain rule. So let's go up to the side here for a second and revisit our chain rule. So let's say I have some f of x and it is squared. Now, if I wanted to take the derivative, I would think of my outside function, which would be this exponent of two, and then I have the inside function, which is f of x. So taking the derivative, I would take the derivative of that exponent of 2, so the 2 drops down, keep the inside function, and it would now be raised to a power of 1, which doesn't do anything. And then we would be multiplying with the derivative of the inside function. So what happened here is we keep our original and we have just apply the derivative to that as that stays the same. And we end up with a multiplication of the derivative of that function. Now, when we go back to our equation, what we're doing is we're substituting y for f of x. So what we have here is really 2 times y times y prime or that derivative of y. But another way that we can write this is 2 times y times dy dx. So the derivative of that equation y with respect to x. And that's how we're going to take the derivative there. So that's how the chain rule is coming into play here. So going back to this, I'm going to be adding, and how I think of this is take the derivative of y squared following our rules, so that would leave us with 2y, but then because of the chain rule, we need to take the derivative of the inside, which is just the derivative of y with respect to x, and that's where we get dy dx. So we end up with these two pieces, derivative following our standard rules times the derivative of y with respect to x. And now our process is solve for dy dx. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. So 2y dy dx equals negative 2x. Divide both sides by 2y so that we completely isolate dy dx. And that's going to be a negative x over y. 
and that right there will calculate our derivatives for us, which we'll take a look at playing within the table in the next one. But that's our process for implicit differentiation is anything with x you just take the derivative as normal or constant but then when you're taking the derivative with respect to y or sorry derivative of y with respect to x be careful that while you're using your derivative rules because of the chain rule we also have a dy dx coming up okay so let's see what this negative x over y is giving us so we just found that dy dx is equal to a negative x divided by y. So as we talked about in that first question about it depending solely on x, and we said no, it actually depends on x and y, that's where we're going to be plugging in both x and y coordinates to find slopes of tangent lines. So if we have the coordinate for 3, and we're going to be calculating this with a negative x over y, so at 4, 3, the slope of our tangent line would be a negative 4 divided by 3. If we have the coordinate for negative 3, we would have negative 4 over negative 3, which is a positive 4 thirds. So what we just found there was if we're at the coordinate for positive 3, our slope would be a negative 4 thirds. So 1, 2, 3, 4. One, two, three, oops, hold on. <laughs> All right, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. And one, two, three, four, one, two, three. And if I graph that, I have a nice tangent line at that point. I went too far. There it is. <laughs> oh. Okay, graphing slope. I just had to kind of wake up my brain a little bit there. And then if we were at the coordinate for negative 3, so for negative 3, you would have a positive slope of 4 thirds. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. And putting that together, we get our tangent line. So, with these, we need an x and y coordinate. What we had done previously was just plug in a value for x and we could get the slope of the tangent line, but now we need both coordinates. Okay, at 0, 5, we would have a negative 0 over positive 5, which is just 0. We'd have a negative negative 3 over a positive 4, so positive 3 fourths. And then at negative 5, 0, what we would have is a negative negative 5 over 0, and we can't, define by, uh, we can't divide by 0, so the slope does not exist for this scenario. It's undefined. And let's see what that means, because we can still graph the tangent line there. It's just that when we go to negative 5, 0, what we're getting out is a vertical line. So our slope is undefined, but we still have an equation of a tangent line, and it's just coming from that x-coordinate that we have. So let's say we wanted to find the equation of the tangent line to that curve at the point negative 3, 4. And what we just found was at negative 3, 4, our slope of the tangent line was 3 fourths. So fitting y equals mx plus b, we know we have y equals 3 fourths x plus b. And then what we'll do is to find b is plug in our coordinate. So 4 equals 3 fourths times a negative 3 plus b. And then simplifying down. So negative 4 is a negative 9 fourths plus b. So b is going to come from a 4 plus 9 fourths, which is the same as 16 fourths plus 20 with plus 9 fourths or 25 fourths. So our equation there would be y equals 3 fourths x plus 25 fourths. And then we could check that by graphing. In fact, let's go ahead and use Desmos to check this out. If we open up a graphing calculator, 
and we graph our original function, so x squared plus y squared equals 25. And then graph the equation of the line y equals 3 fourths x plus 25 fourths. And there we can see our equation of the tangent line to the circle at that point, negative 3, positive 4. Find the equation of the tangent line at that negative 5, 0. So like I was saying and kind of graphing up above, that's creating a vertical line. So because that slope does not exist, and using that visual, we are going to have a vertical line, which is always just defined by x equals a number, and the number we use comes directly from our coordinate because we know it needs to go through negative 5. And that would be it for our calculation there. Okay, so there's a little introduction to implicit differentiation, and we'll get lots more practice in the next videos.